is Kansas City. Yeah. Shit's ran gritty. Yeah. In the summertime, the chicks be damn pretty. Yeah. Born in the projects, then to the veal. Yeah. Hey, you guys. It's me, Bossy. And today's video is going to be an ass Bossy's video. So, I have been getting so many emails like it's not even funny how many emails you guys I've been getting so first I want to say I'm going to start um from the first one I received um after I did my last video I'm going to try to do as many as I can in this video because I don't want the video to be super duper long um but if I did not mention your question in this video it will be in the next one so don't be upset if I do not answer your question I'm going to try to get to you as soon as I can. I promise you, I promise you. I'm not gonna be saying any names in this video. I am gonna give my advice though, just based on what you asked me in your question or whatever it is you wanna know. Um, some of these, if I feel like they're just super fake, I might not even read them. I'm just gonna give y'all my advice. You don't have to take it. You do not have to like it. You may not like my advice just a heads up because everybody don't like the advice i give and that's fine you won't hurt my feelings but let's just go ahead and jump into this first one it says, hey girl i'm a 13 year old from arizona and the problem i'm having is i'm 13 and i haven't had my first kiss and my mama said i could but just not date but all the boys at my school are jerks and i don't know if i should just do it and get it over with or wait or wait okay y'all gotta put some periods some commas or something in here um, I'm going to high school soon and I don't want to start without ever kissing anyone but you know I kind of want to be special what do you think PS I love you okay sweetie you are a baby um, I have basically an almost a 13 year old. She'll be 13 in February and it's not okay for my child to get a kiss at 13. I understand your mother said that's okay, but that's not okay for my child. So if you were my child, uh, you ain't kissing no boy. I don't care if the other kids have done it. You not going to do it. And if I find out my kid did it, then we're going to have problems. 13 is still too young for all that extra stuff. That's how babies pop up, sweetie. Don't even worry about that. Um, remain to be special. You going to high school, you don't need to be worrying about kissing. You need to be worrying about trying to get out of school. That's all I was worried about. So that's not a problem that you haven't had your first kiss. Heck, I didn't have my first kiss until I was 16, thinking I was grown. And then, uh, what, two years later, I end up knocked up. So, just be patient. It's not no rush. It's okay. 13, I wasn't even thinking about kissing no boy. Yeah, I probably thought boys were cute, but I wasn't, I wasn't trying to go there. You seem like you're trying to move a little too fast. Um... I hope your mother has talked to you about where kissing can lead. And plus, you don't need to be kissing everybody out here. Don't worry about all that right now, honey. So, I hope you take that advice. It's probably not what you wanted to hear. Um, but I am glad that you like my videos. But you need to remain special. And don't be kissing up all on these little boys out here. So, just wait. Wait as long as you can. Okay, this next one says, Hi, Bossy. Hi. I am 20 years old and I plan on joining the National Guard. I started my process for enlistment already, but there are a few bumps in the road. I found out I have an iron deficiency, anemia. Mm -hmm, I have it too, girl. And it's frustrating at times. I take iron pills, by the way. I also can't see far at all. Girl, I can't see far at all either and I have an iron deficiency. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, I was in high school at the time I was given this information. Some of my family members think I shouldn't join. It wasn't my first choice to join the military, but it's sort of my last resort, and I really think I could do this. Should I continue my process? Do you think my anemia will hinder me? Okay, well, I can't tell you whether or not you should continue it, but I have anemia, um, I have an iron deficiency. But that shouldn't stop you from joining the National Guard at all. Um, 
I mean, is there anything else that's bothering you? If you can't see far, I mean, you can get contacts, you can get glasses. I'm sure there's other people in the National Guard that wears, you know, contacts or glasses, possibly even have an iron deficiency. Now, if that is a uh, disqualification as far as if you can join or not, then of course, then don't even waste your time if you know for sure that having um, an iron deficiency will, you know, not allow you to join other than that if this is something that you really want to do i would do it in the end it's your life you're getting older you're about to graduate your family may not want you to do it but you need to do what's best for you but the whole anemia i mean un unless you have a severe case i'm not really sure that shouldn't, you know, hinder anything you're trying to do. Just take your iron pills and you should be okay. So I hope that advice helps you some, but you re it really shouldn't stop anything that you're trying to do in life. Hi, Bossy. I would really love your advice. When I was little, my mom's best friend had came to stay with us. He was really chill and he had a daughter the same age as me. I remember one night I couldn't sleep and he was the only one awoke. So I went into his room and he asked me what I was doing up so late and to come here. So I did and he gave me some candy and told me to lay down. So I did. Then he stuck his hand in my shirt and started rubbing my chest and my breast. I was scared. I didn't know what happened. So I just laid there until he fell asleep. I was like eight and I never told my mom or my sister and then he died, and ever since then, I had dreams about it. Should I tell my mom? But every time I tell my mom something, she always tells me how her life was worse. I'm 16, by the way. Thank you so much. Well, first I want to say I'm sorry that that happened to you. Um, no grown man should be doing anything like that to you, um, whether he's your mom's friend or not. That is inappropriate. Um... You know, as a kid, you're scared. You don't know what to do. You freeze sometimes. But, I mean, he's passed away now. So, you don't have to ever worry about that again. Yes, it is probably best that you tell your mother. That way, you can get it off your chest. Because it seems like it's something that's really hindering you and bothering you because you're having dreams about it. Maybe if you tell your mother and talk to her about it, you will probably feel more at ease that... Now you know and you don't have to hold that in and you know she can I'm sure she'll assure you that you didn't do anything wrong. Yes, she'll probably want to know why didn't you tell her, but I'm sure she'll understand you were a child, you were scared, you probably didn't think you probably knew it wasn't right, but you weren't all the way sure. But I mean, yeah, 16, that's bothering you still like that. I would go ahead and tell my mother, you know, she can be aware of what's happened to you. He's not here anymore, so she can't say anything to him. But, you know, you could still, you know, have your mother's support. And you don't ever want anything like that to happen again. And she can give you insight on what to do in the future. If that were to ever happen to you again, which God forbid it does not. Um, you just want to really talk to your mom. That's what moms are for. Talk to your mom and let her know what happened to you. I hope that helps, sweetie. Okay, the next one says, Hi, bossy. So let me get right into it. Mm, okay. I am a 23-year-old stay-at-home mom of a one-year-old. I've been with my husband for almost seven years and married for two in December. I've been with him since I was 16. We've been through so much, but always survived through our storms. Now we're going through a rough patch. These last few months have been hell for us. Our light slash water, etc. have been cut off numerous times this past year. Aww. We've always, we're always late or behind on all our bills. I was raised as the man bring home the money while I stay home to take care of the house and kids. Oh, okay, you were raised to know that the man brings home the money and you stay at home with the house and the kids. Okay. Before we got married, we both agreed to that. My husband makes $22 an hour working at a shipyard, which is a very decent pay to take care of all the house by himself financially. I work every three to four months from home working for call centers, also making 9 to $10 an hour. 
All my money goes towards the bills. He pays what he can, then tells me we're broke, but goes, buys TVs and game systems that we eventually have to sell to pay bills. Oh no. At this point, I just want to take my child and leave. I feel I can do better by myself. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be punished by God since I committed to stick with my husband through thick, through thick and thin. I just hate living like this. He grew up in the projects with his lights, etc. off all the time. I was raised having everything and anything. I cannot adjust to this type of environment and I will not let my child grow up without the things that is needed. I'm not sure what to do at this point, Bossy. I have tried and tried and tried to talk to him. And I even told him I would leave him if he don't get his shit together. He's my husband, best friend, first love, most importantly, father of my child. I always want my first marriage to be my only. But he's making it so hard for me. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. He does seem like he has a decent paying job, especially since you guys just have one child and, you know, you have bills. That's good he has the job, but him not taking care of the bills and just leaving all the bills for you, that's not okay to me. Especially if you're only working every three to four months from home, bills come monthly. Bills never stop. With the money he has, he needs to make sure all the bills and rent is paid first, that your child is taken care of first, and then whatever money he has left, then he can go splurge on his TVs or game systems. That way he doesn't have to continue to buy those things because your bills will be paid and caught up and he can keep his little lavish toys that he wants. But at the same time, he should not be that irresponsible where he's wanting to take care of his wants versus what his family needs. I completely understand when you say you want to make sure your child has everything that they need. Of course, I grew up with everything that I wanted and I needed because my parents made sure our bills were squared away. I'm sure every family has hard times. I know we probably had hard times as well, but at the same time, you have to think about your children first, your family first. You can't allow him to continue to spend money on foolishness when you guys have a family to take care of. I mean, you're still pretty young and if he's not willing to, um, you know, sacrifice his wants and to make sure that his wife is happy, that his household is in order, then that is maybe something that you need to really Think about if this is what you really want. If he does not continue to change, I will never tell a woman to leave their husband. That's a choice that you have to make. But at the same time, I think it's still enough time for you guys to fix what you have going on. Um, but at the same time, yes, you really need to talk to him. If he's your best friend and you don't want to lose that, he should be willing to listen and understand what it is that you feel that needs to happen in your marriage and in your home. You need to just really talk to him. You need to sit down. You guys may even need counseling or he may need counseling. But yeah, you guys really need to communicate with each other. I'm not saying you haven't, but you really, really need to let him know what's going on and possibly let him know that if it doesn't get better, you could leave. And maybe that will help him get his act in order. Okay, this next story says, Hi, Bossy. I love your story times and you're very beautiful. I need some advice on what to settle for. I never really had guidance on the right guys to settle for just because of some of the things I've seen my mother settle for with men. I'm a very attractive young lady and men throw themselves at my feet. And it's like, how can I find Mr. Right when there's men with hidden agendas always approaching me? I'm a very go with the flow young lady and sometimes I can be very naive with love. Lately, I've been seeing some of the mistakes I've been making, such as settling for the wrong guys. I'm tired of it because all I've been dreaming for is Mr. Right to come and sweep me off my feet. So I need to know if I see even one red flag with a guy, should I drop him right away and move on? Okay. You never want to 
settle for wrong guys. I did that before and it was the worst mistake of my life. The only good thing that came out of that was my three daughters. Um, if you see a lot of red flags with these guys that you are dealing with and you know from what you remember being a child of what your mother dealt with and it did not end well for her or she didn't end up with any of these guys and it's the same pattern with the guys that you're dealing with, I would immediately leave it alone because there are a lot of good men out here and if you happen to constantly attract these men that seem no good or they just want sex or they just want money from you or they just want something other than you, anytime you see a red flag, I would run for the hills because not every man is going to be like that. Uh, I'm sorry that you keep getting these type of men, but of course, yes, if you see red flags where they're always wanting you to pay. They only seem to want to have sex with you. They only want to see you after a certain time of night. Uh, they never want to hang out with you as far as taking you places. You never meet any of their friends, their family. If you're dealing with these guys and you're not getting any of that, you need to leave them alone. Those are major red flags, girls. So just guess. Wait for Mr. Right to come along. You will find him. This next one says, Hey, bossy, just wanted to say that I enjoy your Bob story times. I watch you all the way from England. Hey, girl, my England subby and whatnot. And the story about your daughter's hair <laughs> made me laugh so much. I wanted to get your opinion on my situation. I am a 30-year-old female, and I've never been married and never had any kids. I just never met the right guy. Anyway, about four months ago, I met a lovely guy who I've been dating. We get on really well. He's so sweet and we never argue. So what's the issue, right? Right, what is the issue? It says, well, he has three kids from his previous relationship with his ex-wife. Once we started dating, he told me that he had a vasectomy. I can't even read. Once we started dating, he told me that he had a vasectomy a vasectomy, I don't know how to say it, after his third child because he didn't want to have any unplanned children out of wedlock. At that point, I feel a little upset because I have no children and I realize that time is ticking and that's something I would want sooner rather than later. He told me he could get the vasectomy reversed and not to worry, but even so, I feel anxious because he never mentioned exactly when he would reverse the procedure. And would it even be successful? As it's early days in our relationship, I wouldn't expect him to run out and reverse it right now. But I can't help feeling that I may be setting myself up for disappointment in a couple of years because I really do want kids and I think about being a mother all the time. Do you think I should be patient and just enjoy the relationship and hope we can have kids one day? Or should I cut my losses while I'm still young enough to have kids? There's other guys that are trying to date me, but I haven't been paying them any mind because I like this guy and I'm uneasy with the fact he had a vasectomy. I'm not getting any younger. Would appreciate your thoughts. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, you're 30 years old. Um, you still, you know, they say, what do they say? 35 is when it can be a little more high risk. Hell, Janet Jackson is 50 and she's pregnant. So, I mean, you still have some time. But I do understand you feel like the clock is ticking. And you want to be able to have children while you still think you can. Now, if he seems like a really good guy and he made the choice to get himself, you know, fixed. That way, you know, he probably didn't plan on having any more kids. Um, maybe him and his ex-wife uh, thought about this upon a mutual agreement. Um, and then after the fact they didn't work out, he was realizing that, okay, I'm fixed. I don't have to worry about having any more kids while I'm not married. Now, while you guys have now met and you're starting a relationship, I wouldn't rush it too much um, because you could scare him off. Um, enjoy the dating phase. Um, he may want to date you. He may want to marry you, then go through the whole having kids. Um, see if it even, the relationship goes far enough to where 
you really know for sure if he's really, really willing to be with you and stay with you for the long haul, he really may be willing to go ahead and get that reversed. If he feels like you're the one, he will go ahead and do that for you. But right now, I would just enjoy it. I would still make him aware of things you want because if you don't let him know there's no way of him knowing he can't read your mind that way if you know if you guys are really clicking if you feel like your relationship is really going somewhere he may really start to think okay this is a woman I really want to be with uh, that I want to marry I will be willing to reverse what I did to have children with her now I'm sure you would want that done within the next you know four to five years I'm sure um, so hopefully it works out for you now if he just seems like it's something that he does not want he just does not want any more kids and you think he's stringing you along saying that he's gonna get a reverse and he's not and this is something that you really really want and he can't just make that compromise and if you're not willing to accept that um, that he doesn't want to change it then Yes, if it were me, I would probably move on. Um, not every woman wants to be a mother. I wanted to be a mother, didn't want to have that many kids, but I did want to be a mother. And of course, any person that I'm with, I would want them to want to have children. But again, he already has children. He may not want any more, but I wouldn't rush it too soon. Just enjoy your relationship, like you said. And if it doesn't work out, you know, give it a year, give it maybe two years. If you feel like it's not going to progress into anything further, then you might want to cut your losses. So that's my thoughts on it. But you know, you do what you want, girl, for real. But that's just what I think about the situation. Okay, this one says, hi, bossy, I need your help. I'm 15 and currently pregnant with my third baby. What? Come on now. Hold on, let me see. What is... Okay, hold on. Maybe I ain't reading this. Okay. Hi, Bossy. I need your help. I'm 15. Really? <sighs> I'm 15 and currently pregnant with my third baby. I had my first baby at 14 and it was a mistake. Okay, hold on. Is this real? You 15 and you pregnant with your third baby and you had your first at 14? Okay. I had my first baby at 14 and it was a mistake. We were young and stupid. My daughter was born a year later in April and my new baby is due in January. Okay, so where's the second baby at? Is this fake? Let me just read it. I never expected to have baby two and three. When I got pregnant with my second baby, I was right. Hmm. Okay. Both of my oldest children were taken away by CPS. And because I was depressed, I was vulnerable. And I looked for love and found myself pregnant again. But I'm finding myself on my own taking care of the baby. What is your advice on this situation? Do I keep the baby or give her up for adoption? I don't regret any of my babies, but I don't know how to explain to my baby girl what happened to her siblings. Please help. If you need more info, I'll give it to you. Okay. I do not want to be mean when I say these things. <sighs> this is just my advice and my opinion. You said you had your first baby at 14 and it was a mistake. So you gave birth to a baby at 14 and you pregnant with number three at 15? Okay. First off, you have no business. You have no business being 15 and have given birth to three children at 15 and you started at what 13 14 there's no way that that should have happened 
you are still a baby. Like there's no way in heck you should have three children. Now I understand the first time you probably did it the normal way. The second time you said you got pregnant, you said you were raped. I, I'm very sorry that that happened to you. That had to be very traumatic and then it resulted into a baby um, that in the end was taken away from you. That is the sad part. Honestly, I hope this story isn't fake because it kind of seems fake to me. To me, you guys. Fifteen and about to have baby number three. You was doing some work and I, I, I can't believe that. Where's your mother? Like, where's your family? Do you not have, like, I, I, I guess I do need more information. Where's your mother? Where's your father? Do you have any family? Why did CPS take them? Did your family not want to help you? Are you, I mean, are, are you homeless? I don't know if you're homeless. I mean, if you don't have a, a stable place, if you're, homeless and you don't have the money or the means or the energy to take care of this new baby that you're pregnant with if this is real maybe adoption is the best option the baby's gonna come so you don't want the baby to be in the system like the other siblings so i mean maybe adoption is a, a good route of nice family could you know adopt your daughter but if you are able to take care of your daughter then I would keep my baby, but the, but you don't need to be having no more kids. Like, I understand the second time you were raped, but the first and the third time, what was that situation? Like, no, I don't get it. I don't, uh-uh. Congratulations on your new baby if this is real. But, I mean, that's really unacceptable for, to be 15 and having your third child. Like, I'm sorry if you do not like what I'm saying. I, I don't mean to be mean, but I'm just telling you the truth. I don't know about that one. Okay, last one says, hey, Bossy, I'm 15 and I'm from Michigan. Me and my boyfriend have been together for almost two years and we both love each other so much. We had we have had one or two pregnancy scares before me and him. <clears throat> Man, y'all need to stop. If you've had been pregnancy scares, meaning you don't want it to happen, then y'all need to stop having sex or wrap it up or do something like Okay, let me finish reading it. All these young kids, like, I'm so worried about my daughters. Okay, let me see. Focus, bossy. <clears throat> We've had one or two pregnancy scares before, but this time I just have this weird gut feeling that I am. It's kind of difficult for me to get a pregnancy test because I can't drive and my boyfriend lives a good 30 minutes away and we don't go to the same school or anything like that. Like, this is crazy. Like, okay. He gets really upset and nervous when we have had scared... What? He gets really upset and nervous when we have had scares and always says that if I am, I have to get rid of it ASAP and that we won't tell anyone. Y'all need to stop having sex, like straight up. If if he doesn't want a baby and you guys clearly don't have transportation or the funds or the means to take care of a baby, like no, y'all don't y'all need to stop having sex. Um I'm three weeks late on my girl time and I have been just so exhausted every day. Mm, girl. I have, I just have this gut feeling that something's different. I'm not sure what to do. If I am pregnant, I don't know how to tell my parents any advice. Oh, girl. My parents are super religious and we're all Christians and I'm 95% sure they will kick me out if I got pregnant. 
and I'm so scared and nervous and I don't know what to do. Please help. By the way, I love your videos. You are so very much an inspiration. Please, please help me and answer me as soon as possible. Thank you so much. If you're going to put this in a video, I ask to remain anonymous. Thank you. You will be anonymous, honey. But I didn't gave half my advice while reading this. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm hoping you're not pregnant. Especially if you want to keep a roof over your head and... Okay, yeah, you need to stop having sex straight up. You need to stop having sex. Hopefully you're not, but if you are, you are going to have to deal with the consequences. I did too. I waited about uh, a couple of days before I told my parents, but it's something that you're going to have to do. Yes, your ch parents may be super religious and you may think they're going to put you out, but they may not. Yes, they don't want their child having a child um, so young, but I don't know how everyone's parents are, but I just think about my parents and my family members. If that was the case, I'm hoping that they wouldn't kick you out and they want to make sure that you and their grandchild is going to be okay. But you need to straight up stop, need to stop having sex and, um, <laughs> because if you having all these scares and then the boy surely doesn't want a baby and then you guys can't afford it and you're still young, you're 15, y'all need to stop, like, right now. This is ridiculous. Like, you need to stop. I hope you take this advice, but if you are, you need to talk to your parents, like, and let them know what he's saying as well because... If you are and he wants you to kill the baby, I mean, obviously, you know, now he's not going to support you. Maybe it may change, but right now he's wanting you to kill the baby if you are and not tell anyone. Where y'all going to get the money from? Like, you're going to have to tell somebody if you did that. So, yeah, you need to stop having sex. And if you are pregnant, talk to your parents as soon as possible and leave that boy alone. Okay, y'all. This one is actually going to be the last story. I have so many emails and I just need to try to do as much of these as I can in this video. But this next one is really the last one. So this is going to be a long video. Okay. It says, hi, bossy. I just want to start off by saying I love your videos. I've been a fan of your channel ever since the my boyfriend went to prom with someone else video. Your story times are bomb. Your kids are beautiful and I love your beauty videos. I'm 23 years old and I'm single. With that being said, I have three problem guy. With that being said, I have three problems guy wise. I have an ex who is trying to come back into my life, but doesn't have his shit together. He still lives at home with his mother and family and he doesn't work. The second guy is someone I really like. We push each other to do better. He has a good paying job, but it takes him all over the states and he never knows how long he's going to be on the road. We try to stay in contact with each other and just keep it as casual as we can until we decide what we want to do. Last but not least, my last guy problem. He is locked up, but out of all these guys, he's the one that cares for me the most. But with him being locked up, I just try not to get my feelings too involved. I've always heard that when men are locked up, they try to play mind games and try to play with other females' minds as well. I've been ready to just say fuck it and keep moving with my life. My grandmother keeps telling me because I'm young, educated, have no kids or a man, I can do any and everything I put my mind to. Please help me. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, you're 23 years old, and you have these three guys to choose from. All right, number one is your ex, and he's probably your ex for a good list of reasons. He lives with his parents. He's not trying to do anything with his life. Even if he lived with his parents and he was trying to do something, maybe, I don't know. I still don't want to go backwards with my ex. Um, And like I said, there was a reason you broke up, so for me... He would not be an option. Um, number two. 
he you know you're really into him he has a lot going for himself he you know he's probably the perfect gentleman but I can understand if you don't want to have a long distance relationship, especially if you're trying to get to know him better and you don't see him as much because he's going from state to state. You know, that could be, you know, kind of annoying. Now the third one, <laughs> it's funny, us girls like the bad boys. He's in jail. How long is he in jail? And yes, a lot of the stuff that they say about men in jail is true, but not necessarily all guys are like that. He may really care about you. He just made wrong decisions in life and now he's behind bars. But is that something that you want to have to deal with? Personally, I think all three just need to go bye-bye. The first one for sure. The gentleman in jail. I mean, I'm sure he can get out and change his life. But I wouldn't just want to. You're still young. I wouldn't worry about that jail life right now. And then the, the second guy, if he's not going to be around a lot, if you aren't going to see him that often, especially if you guys haven't had a solid relationship before he got this job and started traveling here and there, maybe it's not the best fit. Maybe you should find a guy that is like number two, but that has a consistent job where you are at. Um, if you're really trying to be with someone, but you're 23, you have time. Today, like your grandmother said, you are successful. What does she say? Like your grandmother said, you are young, you are educated, and you don't have no kids, you don't have no baggage, you don't have any of these men. You have time for that. If I could go back in time, I would have done things a little differently myself. But yeah, all of those men just let them go and you a bad sister to be dealing with three I couldn't do it that's just me personally that's too much for me to try to keep up with but yeah I would just focus on you and not focus on these guys and just wait until you think you're really ready and find someone that's really ready for you and that doesn't have a lot of baggage or a lot of issues and someone that you could really grow a genuine relationship with that you don't have to see every six months or every year depending on how their job is set up and then of course I personally wouldn't go back with the ex of any kind um so yeah um that's my advice to you you guys that was the last question for the night I think I did about 10 or 11 um you guys don't have to take my advice but I hope you try to take some of it. Um, and I'm not trying to be mean when I give this advice. I'm being honest and genuine. This is what I would tell my kids or my friends or my family. This is just straight up. But a lot of y'all young kids is having too much sex for me. Like, I guess, I guess how, maybe I just, I don't know. That pregnancy one, the three pregnancies, that's what really got me. But, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be doing the Ask Bossy videos. I'm going to try to do them. I'm going to try to do them once a week. But it could be every two weeks. I'm not sure yet. Busy mother. That's all I'm going to say. But, welcome to all of my new subscribers. Hey to all my old, loyal, faithful subscribers. Y'all, thank y'all for subscribing and watching my videos. I love y'all so much. I really, really do. Y'all don't understand. And y'all, I'm trying, like I said, to get to 40,000 subscribers by December 31st. We'll see. I'm trying to get there. I don't know if it's going to happen, but if it don't, that's okay. I still love y'all, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, loves.